You have come across this message today and I want you to believe that God bring you to this channel today to listen to his servant, Apostle Jesus Shama. It is the desire of God that you become what he wants you to be. I want you to pay attention to every bit of word that God has for you through His, through the mouth of his servant, Apostle Jesus Shama. We have lost worship in our churches, I'm telling you. We have lost the art of His presence. Many people know how to pray, but many people do not know how to touch the heart of God. I have found my servant, David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to me. Hallelujah. There are some of you now that believe we are wasting our time. There are some of you scattered in the congregation just wondering, why are we wasting our time? In two more minutes, just cry out to him. You have two minutes. Just tell him whatever you want to tell him. Forget the fact that you came here with anybody. I know you are a man of God. I'm not asking you about the crusades you have gone through and how many wheelchairs. I don't care about all those vanities this night. I know you see visions. That's none of our business this night. Just two minutes. Let's strike for two more minutes and we're done. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit. become a great man of God, listen to me. When you become the great woman of God, don't be so ashamed to worship God in the presence of those who honor you. You let them know there is one who is mightier than you and that you are not ashamed to acknowledge this. Let Koinonia remain the place of your presence. Let it remain the habitation of the glory. We refuse to do what everybody is doing. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in one minute before you sit down, I'd like you to say, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see more. Pray it. Inside and outside. Say, Lord, open my eyes. There is something you can show me that will make me a wonder to my generation there's something Moses saw there's something Elijah saw there's something Elisha saw hear me there is something you can see higher that will make your world celebrate you I don't care what is not working in your life show me 
what I need to see to become a global wonder. Show me what I need to see to carry that healing anointing for real, not fake powers. Show me what I need to see to end inferiority in my life. Show me what I need to see to make my generation listen to me. Show me what I need to see that is bigger than my background, that is bigger than my failure. Show me what I need to see that can remedy for my past. Hallelujah. 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 Father, help us. This is our cry. This is our desire. Show us something. I prayed this prayer years ago and God answered it and He's still answering it. Some of you are sitting quietly in this congregation. When God is done with you, you will be surprised what He will make. And you will remember these days. When I didn't have one night, I cried like this. Even if I have one trillion, I will still cry before him. When I could not afford to buy a good shirt, I cried like this. Doesn't matter what I wear, I will roll it on the ground. When I didn't hold a mic, I cried like this. When there was no one in that room, I cried like this. Before a billion people, I would still cry. If God can get your heart, He will give you His hands. And when His hand comes upon your life, you will do wonders. Hallelujah. Those who can sit down, sit down. If you cannot sit down, sit on the floor, sit anywhere, don't worry. Sit down, let's see what we can do in the few minutes we have. Never feel stupid for what you are doing. Never feel foolish. Never feel foolish for what you just did. In Koinonia, we don't care who is who. When we come before God's presence, we are all equal as far as His presence is concerned. Thank you, Lord. Revelations 2. Let's see what we can touch this night. Verse 3. Shabalada Bakura Bada. This was the Spirit of God speaking. Jesus speaking to the churches. And this was the church, the message to the church in Ephesus. Let's start from verse 2. It says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how that cannot bear them who are evil. And thou hast tried them who say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Verse 5. This is a very important message. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else. I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. I want to show you why certain people have come out of the emphasis of the spirit. Listen please. I have a very simple but powerful message. My teaching very briefly this night seeks to teach you the spiritual principle that can make you relevant regardless of the seasons. Hallelujah. There are certain people who begin to walk with the Lord. Please listen to me. 
when you look around Nigeria today, you will see certain people who were major apostolic voices before, but right now they are quiet. They have not backslidden, but you know they are no longer in the current agenda of what the Spirit of God is doing. What makes a man to be a voice today, a global voice, and then later on, you will lose relevance completely. Ministry motions are still on, but the imprint of their grace is no longer speaking in the body of Christ. There are many people who have become victims of being etched out. The candlestick has been taken out of his place. The candlestick supplies light. And when that light comes, there is illumination. There is direction. Hallelujah. What makes someone to stand with God and that God will give him a voice and he will see mighty things in his life. And later on, the person just gets quiet. I need to teach you this. So that after 30 years, if Christ tarries, we will still be relevant. Have you had people talk about certain people and say, in the days of XYZ, this brother or this man was a fiery man of God. And they list all the testimonies that used to happen in that church or in that music ministry or in that whatever it is. And they say, today, the person is still there scrounging for relevance. Hallelujah. The secret of sustained glory. Hear me? There is nothing, there is nothing as, as horrifying as coming on the spotlight and then the Lord shifts the light from you by himself. Not a demon spirit. It's better not to have risen in the first place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Than to be a voice to command unction across territories. And then gradually, you and everybody around you knows that God, you have come out of season with God. There are many people in the body of Christ today who are developing programs and different things to keep themselves relevant in the body. But everyone, including those who are not sensitive, they know that there is a shift. They are still part of the universal agenda of God. But the emphasis of God that's in that season, they did not make that match. They didn't qualify. Hallelujah. We are going to examine what does it take to remain relevant regardless of the kinds of seasons that God brings. What does it take to still be in God's program no matter what it is that he's doing that he will not be able to do it without you. That he can say although seasons are changing, dimensions are changing, prophetic faces are changing, but you still remain constant. There are churches today that have dried out of the agenda of God. They are just carrying what we are calling motions. Forcing a lot of relevance from every angle. But the sincere truth is that they are not carrying any candlestick again. Are you hearing me? And we are going to examine why. What does it take to be featured in God's current move? What does it take to be part of what God is doing in the now? Not what he did yesterday. Seasons change. The emphasis of God changes. But what does it take a man? What, do, what does it take a man to keep walking with God? That regardless of the season, you, see, you remain relevant. When I started out, there were many pastors. There are not so many in Zaria and around again. There used to be many people. Men of God, different caliber and type of people. Some were doing ministry as if it's 100 meters. Hallelujah. Today, some of them are not even in the faith. Not to talk of the ministry. Hallelujah. Some of them have fallen out of relevance. Many of them have entered into all kinds of things. May God keep us. I said, may God keep us. Very quickly. Let's examine what does it take. To be part of God's program for every season and not to be edged out when a new move comes. Number one, character. Everybody write character. Now look up please. In subsequent teachings before the year wraps up, I'm going to teach us on 
the mystery of the moon and the sun. Hallelujah. How that the moon is a type of the church and the sun is a type of God, the Christ. Hallelujah. The moon does not have any light of its own. Is that true? It is whatever it gets from the sun that it reflects to the inhabitants. And that until believers come to that point where we have no life in ourselves outside of God, and all that people see is a reflection of all that he is. Number one, character. In Genesis 1.26, he said, Let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. The word image there means his nature, his attributes, his character. Let us make man to have our own type of character. And then his likeness means let him function like us. The same way we speak and things happen. Let him speak and things happen. Hallelujah. The same way we can change impossible situations. Many people have assumed the likeness of God, but not his image. Hallelujah. There are many of us men of God. We are pressed to the dimension of God's likeness. His faith. We can speak like God speaks. We have his intelligence. We have his audacity. But we lack his image, his character, his nature. And on that character, there are two things we we'll look at. Number one, A, integrity. B, humility. Hallelujah. You want to be relevant in God's agenda, regardless of what seasons. I'm giving you the key. Integrity. We'll look at some scriptures very quickly. Proverbs 2, verse 21. God fired this thing in my spirit and I told him, I said, Lord, I want to remain relevant. Just write it. I'll run through them very quickly. These are scriptures on integrity. So, A, integrity, on that character. Proverbs 2, verse 21. It says, For the upright shall dwell in the land, and he that has integrity shall remain in it. Some versions say the perfect. Hallelujah. He said the upright will dwell in the land, but it is men of integrity that will remain. There are people who come and they go, but there are some people that remain. Hallelujah. Do you know what integrity is? Integrity is the ability to maintain your values, regardless of the consequences, regardless of the circumstances. The ability to maintain your values. There are many people that where something they stood for something else years ago but right now they have compromised on their values integrity hallelujah that you represent something to the body and after 20 years you still represent it regardless of the consequences whether you have members or not whether you'll be famous or not integrity many people like integrity hate I, I mean lack integrity we dance to any tune that comes so long as it can sell hallelujah psalm 41 verse 11 to 13 very quickly still talking on integrity i just want the bible to speak for itself lord grant us grace we have to run psalm 41 I don't want to have to put a B part for this teaching. Psalm 41, from verse 11 to 13. Okay. By this, I know that thou favorest me, because my enemy doth not triumph over me. Verse 12. It says, and as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity, and settest me before my face. 13. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. He says, My integrity, you upheld me because of my integrity. Can I tell you something? If you become a minister with integrity, if you become a man or woman of integrity, that you refuse and say, I am not changing. What is seen today is seen after 30 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What brings the favor of God today will bring the favor of God after 30 years. No bribe, no corruption, no tricks, no pranks, no matter what it will cost you. Everybody say integrity. We lack this grossly in the body of Christ. Job, in Job chapter 2. Let's look at verse 3. Job 2. Verse 3. It was a great man. The Bible says, 
this was God himself speaking to Satan. Listen. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? He says, A perfect and upright man. This is God speaking about a man. That feared God and eschewed evil. He said, And still he holdeth fast what? His integrity. Although thou movest me against him, this sorry Satan. I mean, this is God now. He said, Thou movest me to destroy him without a cause. Although he has pain, although this guy who was the greatest man in Israel, no crowd again, nobody was talking about him. He used to be the talk of the town. The Bible says that he still held fast his integrity. Many people, you are a sister that promise yourself that no brother will sleep with you until you are married. But as your age is going by, are you getting me now? You say, okay, under certain circumstances, we can bend. Everybody say integrity. Many people lack integrity in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Many people lack integrity. A man of God who starts out well, preaching the truth, saying a lot of things. The day a millionaire comes into his church, he now goes to meet the person to corner him and start doing certain things. I like you to say in the name of Jesus. I will hold integrity no matter what it will cost me let's run thank you jesus let's look at verse 9 verse 9 of same job 2 verse 9 everybody read what do, what did his wife tell him the wife got so tired of his integrity your integrity can frustrate a lot of people. And they will tell you, why not bend? Are you not a Nigerian? Hallelujah. Have you seen people that sleep around and men of God convince them and say, who is not doing it? Everybody is doing it. Let me tell you, not everybody is doing it. There are some people that have refused to bow to bear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let anybody fool you. Yeah, everybody is doing it. Every man of God you see touch something, just forget. It's not true. There are some people that have made a determination in their heart that they will hold fast their integrity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, every miracle is stage managed. Forget Jare. I keep telling people, if you think the miracles, well, I know there are places they stage manage miracles, but if you think it's easy to act a miracle, try it. Produce a Nigerian film called The Miracle and act as many miracles as you can act and see how it will wear you away. The wife, a time can come, even your father can say, what is it about sleeping with that director? We are suffering in this house. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Does sleeping with somebody kill somebody? Or will you bend? Hallelujah. Last week, after the service, a couple came and met me. And they said um, that they were not able to bring their tithe. And that this is the tithe. This is for koinonia. Koinonia tithe is not my tithe. I told them, I said, go and give the treasurer. Hello? There are some of you that say, ah, this is after service. What is there? Me and the ministry, what is the difference? Do you hold fast your integrity? Hallelujah. 